Hello, Active Sage here on the Sage channel, and today we're going to be doing a quick look at, I believe it's called the Showdown demo. It's pretty cool, it's just, um, well, basically you hovering down a street. But to do this, we're going to be wearing the Oculus Rift, which is actually the thing I'm using as my microphone right now, hence the reason I'm holding it in such a strange way. Now, the way I'm recording the footage here, just because you might be curious, is I'm basically recording my whole desktop, and then I'm probably just going to crop out the little window that pops up when you run the game, because rather unfortunately, there isn't really any easy way to capture Oculus Rift footage. I'd have to basically start the demo up and then begin capturing that, and you can't apparently mirror it to another screen right away and the demo pretty much starts up right away so we might have a little bit of footage of me standing here as well as that i don't know we'll find out in the edit a eh? it's probably going to show up on screen in a second so right now i'm going to take off the hat put on the oculus rift and uh well get in there so one of the interesting things about the oculus rift is that there's a little detector in there, basically a light sensor. The second you put it on, it detects, hey, you got your rift on. And it really quickly goes ahead and launches the Oculus home. It might actually be a distance sensor. If it was just light, you'd think it would set it off in a dark room. But uh, either way, the second you put this thing on, it goes ahead and launches the Oculus home sort of game area. And in the screen, I'm able to see a sort of fantastical world, a rather nice room. Now I can't easily capture that. There's something else I can run to get that up. I haven't installed that yet. Hopefully next video if we're using Oculus still, uh, or at least the Oculus Home still will be using that. But either way, here we go. We're going to put this on and I'm going to launch the experience and you'll see that footage of the actual shadow showdown thing as well as me. So hair back, pull that back, put that on, bring it over. There we go. So now for me, I'm in the Oculus Home area here and I'm still using the microphone in the headset itself. Uh, there is sound here, I think. Okay, doesn't look like the sound's working actually right now. It's probably still going through my headset because I had the little built-in headphones off earlier. So for the time being, I'm going to put this back on, which is a complete other mess, but whatever. And mainly it's a visual experience, this. So now I'm actually looking for this little remote here on my desk. And I'm able to see that because there's a rather large nose gap right there. Uh, actually, pretty damn large. Now I think about it. But I, they're going to accommodate a lot of people. I'm going to go through my library. Unfortunately, you can't see this. And we're just going to go ahead and click the... Where is it? Ah, Showdown Demo. Awesome. And so far, this is one of the coolest things I've seen. It's, I believe, designed to be a standing experience, but we're going to be playing it sitting, of course. Uh, and maybe standing up if we decide to. So there you go. You should be able to actually see the footage now. Just double-checking and capture. Yep. So should be a big thing floating there. I think the way this is functioning currently is it's just capturing my left eye or other. There we go, and we're right into it. And you can see, it's immediately pretty awesome, especially for me, because if you don't know, the Oculus Rift, of course, gives you depth. So usually you just see a 2D screen, it's what you're seeing on YouTube. But me, I can actually tell that there's depth in all of the different bits of this character here. Uh, unfortunately, these, they're basically flat little things that can fly at me. These are real 3D ones, but like that one, that one's clearly just a flat thing designed to face you. But overall, you can see there's a lot of detail here, and you can actually tell what's really modeled in and what isn't instantly. Like uh, these gunshot holes on the floor, if I move, there's some jitter here, which makes me a bit ill, but you can actually tell they look like they're hovering about an inch over the floor. If it wasn't for the virtual reality headset, I could tell that, but the only way I could tell that usually is just because of the parallax you would see between the actual normal brown and that bullet hole being projected onto it. It's pretty damn awesome. All these, of course, are little 2D things. Uh, and as you've probably heard other people say before, you do have this sort of natural urge to, oops, lose your headset, to move out of the way of them. Sorry if that gave us some sound trouble. Here's an amazingly annoying little bin that just sort of gets in front of you. I think it might be a real physics object because it's in a different place every time I've played this. It's amazing because it feels like I can just grab it. In fact, I can even look around it because, if you don't know, the Oculus Rift has not just motion tracking so you can move your head up, down, left, right, look up and down like it's a camera, but you can actually lean that tracks your, the actual Oculus Rift on your head like a helmet. So like, oh my goodness gracious, great multiplier. fire. <laughs> uh, not like a helmet, but like a, um, 
Well, in 3D space, it actually tracks it. So the DK1 and the DK2, if you don't know, the earlier versions of the Oculus headset, very simply, if you were to move your head to the right, it would track, using sensors inside the headset, to track the movement to the right, to the left, up and down. But if you were to lean to the left, in the 3D world, you would not actually lean to the left. Well, it now does that thanks to a little camera I got sitting over on my desk, which I think me pointing at it might have caused some decent in the little 3D world I'm currently seeing and can't show you. Uh, everything shifted. Very annoying, actually. I would say it's extremely annoying trying to record footage for this, uh, just because it's not all in one window. It's not like in the past, in the UK one days, where you could have an output feed of basically everything that showed up on the headset. Right now, it's basically, they're all, every single thing is its own little window. So you can't just set something to be recording one window and go. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and do that again. Because I actually really do love that shadow run demo. Shadow run, I keep calling it shadow run. Show down demo. There we go. Footage should be back on screen. I tilt my head up like that every now and again. This because I'm trying to make sure it is actually showing up on my monitor. And it is. There we go. And now, of course, the bullet whizzing by me. What do we want to look at this time? Well, some of the cool things they have actually put into this demo, not that. That's actually very disappointing is watch curves and it hits the thing and the explosion appears below it. I get such a and then the rocks very obviously come flying out of it. <laughs> uh, and of course, remember, because you have this heads on, which has two screens in it, so you actually have one image for one your right eye and one image for your left eye, and they're both offset and it's rendering it for both of them. You actually get real depth on things that are properly 3D modeled in. So that guy actually felt like he was right in front of me. And that guy is screaming as a bullet hit him in the head. Uh, it's pretty nifty. Yeah, I'm sorry, I just swatted at one of these things because you feel like you should be able to hit him, even though these are flat little things. Uh, easiest way to tell those, and we'll go through this demo again, easiest way to tell that they are flat is just because as you rotate your head around, they stay facing the same exact way. Check out that Coca-Cola can, eh? Oh, here we go. So we should be able to rotate around and see, yeah, these are, they stay facing me right the same way. Otherwise, they should be all very thin, very flat. Also this, you can tell this is fake depth because if we stand up, you see it sort of like reaches down and goes farther, but you're not actually seeing any more of what's down there. It sort of flattens out and stretches. And you can see those cracks on the ground over there. They're, you, know, you see, I'm basically seeing under the explosions there. And you see stuff moving about, it's pretty nifty. Oh, and this time the pan didn't get in front, get in front of us, I just poked the wall. And of course this guy's screaming, we can do a cool thing when we get out to the wall here. But yeah, we can scoot over to the side and just check him out. It's, it's pretty cool. You know, it's honestly very, very cool being able to move around. This is one of the coolest things I've found, honestly. I played a lot, of, uh, like a couple, an hour or so of Valkyrie. E Valkyrie, it was pretty awesome, but this is, this is pretty awesome, this bit. So we're going to do it one more time. So I really do enjoy it quite a bit. And this time, um... Uh, well, I was thinking I was going to stand up, but well, my camera's not set up for that. So if I am using any camera footage, it's going to be cropped pretty badly. But well, I'm going to stand up so that I can see that these guys, they're not the tallest soldiers. I'm only 5'10", I think it's calibrated correctly. So these guys aren't all that tall, but they look awesome, and I would absolutely like to have them as a suit. Now, one of the things that you might have heard people talk about is motion sickness in VR, and I apparently am relatively immune to it, it would appear. Um, I don't know, maybe it's because of a lifetime of playing games and all that stuff. You see, these are actually 3D, but these little, some of the little ones I don't think are. Actually, those all look pretty 3D. Pretty awesome. Oh, there we go. You see how everything's jittering and shaking about there? It's because the camera, I believe, is losing tracking for some reason. Rather than, of course, there, this is definitely a 2D one. You see, it stays the same way around me. And missile hit. We don't need to see that again. I do take an interest in these cars because they're sort of like inspired by the DeLorean, it seems. Their overall shape and design. Unfortunately, you can't really see inside this one at all. But um, luckily, this one here actually has a bit more of an interior. You can actually see the stuff up in there. Um, it's pretty cool. And even this dude up here, which I'm always tempted to boop him on the head. Pretty damn nifty. Pretty damn nifty. A lot of details. And of course, this thing again. Really, you know, when I move over, I should be able to see more into it, but I'm not. So you can tell it's just a decal. The train has not actually changed. The actual polygons haven't altered and shifted. Now, this time, we're going to try something a little bit different. We're going to get over to his other side. I'm going to try to stick my head inside his noggin when it comes roaring down here at me. 
I was hoping I'd see something in there. It was just black, wasn't it? All righty, guys and gals. Um, oh, boy. Well, if I used my camera footage for that, you probably couldn't see much of me. Just my body and my hands gesturing if I even used that. But there you go. That's that thing. Let's do it one more time. I really do enjoy it. It's probably, one of the, like I said, it's one of the coolest things I've found. And uh, by the way, the little headphones that are built into the Oculus, like I kind of mentioned in passing earlier, you can remove those. So I removed them earlier just because I was like, well, I want to actually have my ears closed off with my big headphones. But I found my big headphones don't have the same 3D sound that these little buggers do, so I tried to put them back on, but unfortunately, didn't really get them active. By the way, check out that storefront over there. You can actually see there's some interiors to it. it. Looks like it's mostly flat in there, but there's some stuff. Oh, I can see some world holes on the bottom of the door and stuff there. Uh row. Everything's falling apart, mister! It's pretty damn nifty. I really wish I had some of this armor in real life. Because, man, these guys look so damn cool. I mean, look at that! So badass! Especially that helmet, eh? So, so damn cool. It's sort of um an AR helmet from the looks of it, too. Since it is like just a solid piece of metal from the looks. Or it could be see-through, I guess, the metal there. And you can even see in the sort of the storefronts and stuff, and even looking, sorry if there's some odd sound there, but looking up into a lot of the other windows and stuff up there, some of you can actually see some stuff. It's just super like a, a square room in there, but it's still pretty awesome. Yeah, overall it's a pretty cool um, experience. What's that sign say? Eat level B? I have no idea what that's supposed to even mean. Pretty damn cool. Let's say, go ahead and just turn around and look back. And you see the three the guys, they kept moving. And now they're sort of set up in their almost defensive position, ready to keep trying to fight. <laughs> We're, of course, the magical chair that floats into the uh, trouble zone here. It's pretty damn cool. Pretty damn cool. You see bits of the city, but they get really, really low poly the farther away they get. Like, that's just a flat image over there. Pretty damn cool. Well, alrighty guys and gals, that is that. Uh, take off the headset, which by the way, like I said, you don't actually need one of these. If they got their own little, these little sound clippies that hopefully you can see sticking out the side here. They usually work pretty well. But since I took them off earlier and put them back on, uh, apparently I haven't gotten sound back. I think I probably need to restart the whole Oculus system again. It's very annoying how separate the Oculus is now from the rest of your computer, basically. It's, well, it's very separate. It's like they don't want anybody else tinkering with it. To even, you, you can use this in Steam VR because there's a lot of Steam games that have Oculus support, but to do that, you actually have to have the Oculus Home application running and then launch Steam VR. So it's a really, really annoying thing. I really wish it could work on its own. They did it apparently to basically, um, save on some latency so it's not going through your whole computer's main system and then being called up. Basically, it's not being run as a third monitor or something, or a second monitor. It's being run as its own special magical thing, which is unfortunate because it means I can't just set OBS to record it as its own monitor. Well, guys and gals, that is that. Uh, that was our showdown demo thing. It's an Unreal Engine 4 thing. It's pretty cool. You can see a lot of effects really start to fall apart once you actually get proper depth. And also, I think those, those bullet kits on the ground were pretty shoddy, honestly, because they looked like they were placed about an inch off the ground, and really they should have been, like, just a centimeter, if that, off the ground, so the decal wouldn't look like it's hovering. Because even in a normal game with one eye closed, I'm sure you guys could have seen it on YouTube. Uh, yeah, that is that. Thank you a whole bunch for watching. Hopefully I've been looking roughly at the camera and not really past it. And, um, yeah. I'll see you guys and gals next time for some more VR nonsense. Um, yeah. You should turn the fan on.